I think wooden hand planes get a little bit of a bad rap, especially in our modern YouTube community of woodworkers and creators, mainly because I don't think people quite understand it. And I'm here to make a case that a wooden hand plane might be a great option for somebody just starting out, might not have a huge budget or somebody that just kind of really enjoys it, or it might be a great project to make your own. Uh, I think a lot of the bad rap because people don't quite understand how to adjust them. It's not like a metal hand plane that has lots of screws and levers, which is kind of obvious how you can move it around to adjust the blade. There might be a little bit of a black art to the wooden hand plants, or more likely just not quite understanding how you can use Newton's laws to adjust them. So in this Throwback Thursday, we're going back to a video I made back in January of 2018. Uh, it only got about 13,000 views back then. I only had you know a little under 50,000 subs, and it's all about adjusting wooden hand plants, how simple it can be. Now, since that time, uh, I've shown a lot of people how to do it, and I get a, some flack for how I teach people to adjust metal planes in that I actually tell people, go ahead and tap the blade to make adjustments. You're gonna see that in the video. The flack is people say that, oh, you're going to mushroom the edge of the, pl the blade and stuff like that. And you know what? I'm almost to the point where I'm saying that that is probably one of those dogmas that were taught to public high school students based upon writings and uh, textbooks from the 40s and 50s. You know, old, old, old hand planes, blades, they were made out of two pieces of metal, a really high quality metal on the edge of the blade and then kind of pop metal for the rest of it because it saved money. And yeah, that pop metal might have been soft and it would mushroom, but who cares? It's the top of the blade. Worst case scenario, take a mill file. You can take the mushrooms off. It won't affect performance. Maybe Cosmex, that's no big deal. It might even improve Cosmex because it gives you a wider striking area. But modern day steels are so much harder, so much better. You really have to be abusive to mushroom it. In fact, most people recommend you know, just use a, a brass mallet. It's softer than the steel, so you're going to dent the brass versus the metal. Me personally, my favorite plane adjusting is this cheap, I wanna say it's less than $8 when I bought it from a Sears that was going out of business. It's got you know nylon and rubber. You can find them just about everywhere. Use the nylon on the metal, use a rubber on the wood to make your adjustments. The other thing I wanna kind of expand upon that I covered in this video is having a longer blade. Here's one of the very first hand planes I made. It's got a hawk blade on it, and I'll include a link down to, uh, in the description to the hawk company. I highly recommend them. But if you get one, I suggest getting the longer versions of the blade. And right, basically that's just because you have more metal up here. It's not gonna give you a longer life plan. It's one of those things that when you're doing adjustments, it's kind of like you've got the bottom of the blade fixed in the, hand, in the plane, and if the top is hanging up in the air, well, it's kind of loose. So if you adjust it, say you can adjust, bang the bottom, and it takes a while for the top to catch up. So that's how you can get your lateral and adjustments left and right, and in and out. Having that weight up here just makes it a little bit easier. I didn't quite fully explain that in this video, but adjusting hand planes really is simple. So let's get to it with a throwback Thursday, way back to a video called Adjusting Wooden Hand Planes. The first hand plane I built was this coffin smoother. I took a class from Roy at, up at Roy Underhills to make it, and it is a phenomenal plane. I really enjoy using it, and I come back to it time and time again. But this design is, is a little finicky, and it's this kind of setup that I think kind of turns a lot of people off of adjusting it. And it all comes down to the blade. It's an extremely good blade as far as a steel design, but it is straight. So when you place that in your plane, all the holding action happens with this wedge right here. So even though you, you kind of have to get it a little bit too tight to really lock this blade in for heavy use because all the force is coming back this way and it wants to push the blade up. So when you get this too tight, 
it makes adjusting the blade a little bit easier. The old timey guys, they always had tapered blades. They were thicker down here and they would pound them out flat this way. The Japanese style, same way. And that is because if you have two wedges working against each other, they lock each other together so you don't have to have as much pressure on the wooden, wooden wedge. Now the wooden plate I use the most is one of the Krenov styles I've built. I built a lot of these and sold some online. And it uses a hawk blade. And if you understand a hawk blade, basically it is a straight blade. It's dead flat. And, you know, I, I love Ron Hawk. He makes a great product. And, but him saying that he doesn't have a tapered iron isn't quite the truth. Because this iron uses a chip breaker. And that chip breaker has a bend to it. It's a slight bend, but it is a slight bend, which makes it thicker here than it is back here. And that is what creates that wedging action, which makes this plane not only a little bit easier to adjust, but it holds its adjustment longer. What makes it easier to adjust is if you do not have to put that much pressure on the wedge. The wedging action itself will hold it. It's just a few slight wraps and I'm all set to go. This is adjustable. In fact, if I really pushed hard, I can move it with my fingers, as you can see. But that is all the pressure I need to, for it to hold it down. I initial set up, I drop it down on the, my bench, and I just slightly push that wedge in. And it'll hold just fine. Now, to make adjustments, all we need to do is take into account Newton's laws. Now, to paraphrase, uh, Newton basically said, Something in motion will stay in motion unless a force acts against it, or something at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts against it. Now, a hand plane is basically three moving parts. You got the blade, you got the wedge, and you got the block. The block being the heaviest, but these will move independent of each other. So right now, it is at rest. And if I start planning with it, I notice it's a little bit heavy on this side. Now the top of the blade is important on these things because you got weight up high and it's kind of anchored down below. So if somehow you can bump it so that the blade will tilt, the top of this blade will come over this way, it will take less pressure on that side. So one way to adjust it, the reason why a lot of hand blades are locked off the side is you can simply tap it. Another way is if I were to tap the body of the plane, the blade will stay and move over a little bit. Very simple. And after you adjust it, a slight tap on the wedge just to make sure it's still anchored. And then I test it out. Now I'm taking a full width shaving right there. Easy adjustment. If you want to make it go deeper, obviously you can just tap right here. But if you want to make a micro adjustment, you can also tap on the front. And because it's pushing down, I don't have to really touch the wedge yet. And now, I'm taking a thicker shaving. If I want to make it pop back out a little bit, you can tap a little bit on the back. Readjust the wedge. And now it's probably not taking a shaving at all. Very easy to adjust. So if you're new to working, don't be afraid of a wooden hand plane. You can get them at a great value out there. A lot of times a steel is some of the best out there. You can make your own fairly simply. Just buy the blade, build the body. And just a little bit of practice. We're talking a few minutes and you can grasp the idea of how to adjust them. Uh, by the way, I really like these cheap rubber and uh, silicon or nylon mallets. Use the nylon on the blades and the rubber on the wood. They just work great. Best adjustment hammer I know of. So y'all be safe and have fun.